Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. I'm Tash and if you're a returning viewer, thanks for coming back. And if you're new here, this is a weekly podcast where I talk mostly about the knitting that I've been doing during the week and I also put out regular tutorials on um, a technique that either someone's asked me about or something that I've come across in my knitting that week. Right, so I feel like I'm finally sort of back to my normal, <laughs> normal episodes. It is Wednesday the 10th of January. Uh, 2024 and I'm recording from Sydney Australia and so as usual I like to start with my finished objects um, just one for this week and that is the one that I'm wearing which is the anchor summer shirt by Petite Knit and I knit this out of Habu bamboo uh, which I've had in my stash for many years and I'm really happy to have finally found um, a really happy marriage between the yarn and the pattern so um, I'll tell you a little bit about it. I cast on the um, I cast on four stitches less than the extra small size. The extra small uh, was a bust circumference of 33 and a half inches, and I had a feeling that my gauge, or at least in my swatch, was going to be a bit bigger. I got eight, even on a smaller needle, a three and a half mil needle, I got 18 stitches with my washed swatch, and the pattern gauge is 20 stitches. So I was a bit worried that it would be a little bit. Um, uh, even bigger than 33 and a half inches so I cast on four less stitches and then as it increased down the body that ended up being about 10 less stitches on the yoke so I was then I was still a bit then I was a bit worried that it wouldn't be big enough so I did one extra raglan increase which I probably didn't need to do and I cast on a few less stitches under the arms so it ended up a bit of a hybrid in terms of what I actually did, I sort of, you know, because it's top down, I was winging it a bit along the way. This is my second version of the pattern. So I did feel, you know, I felt confident in sort of the way it was fitting, but because this yarn is 100% bamboo, I knew it would stretch a lot, um, but I think it stretched more in length, which is kind of what I was expecting, but you know, you're never quite sure. Um, it stretched more in length than it did in width. So um, it ended up sort of where the arm side, this arm side is nine inches long, which is was okay. I actually really wanted it quite oversized. Um, but the funny thing is actually the gauge, my final gauge ended up after washing, because it's been fully blocked now, in the final sweater after washing it, my gauge is exactly 20 stitches. So after all that, swatching with different needles and going down needle sizes and mucking around, um, I ended up with a gauge of um, 20 stitches. As a result, the bust circumference is 31 inches, which would normally indicate negative ease. However, I'm going to just stand up and show you. When I say the bust circumference is 31 inches, that's around from here to here, but that's not sitting on my bust. My bust is up here and the 31 inches occurs here. So that really occurs at my underbust. My bust has all of the yoke stitches on it, so it's got plenty of ease. Now my underbust, so my bust is 32 inches, my underbust is 28 inches. So that's why you can see it actually looks like, even though I've said the bust circumference is 31 inches, when people say bust circumference, sorry, I should sit down while I'm talking. When people say bust circumference, they usually mean like under the arms from side, you know, around which for me, yes, that's 31 inches, but that's sitting on my body at the 28 inch circumference, which is why it looks like I have ease, because I do. So certainly along my bust, I've got plenty of ease. It's very drapey, you can see this fabric is really, it's just got lovely movement, and I'm just wearing it with black, black jeans, but I could wear it to work with black pants. I decided to make elbow length sleeves, because I think just, particularly because the arm side was quite long. If I stopped the sleeves there, it was kind of at a weird, I don't know, I just wasn't gonna be happy with that, I think. So I went for elbow length, which I think looks really nice. Now, I, I know people do this, I don't know that I would fully tuck them in. Um, there's my navel right there, so I've got a bit of length. I could, people sort of do seem to do this kind of like, I don't know, half tuck thing, like that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, whatever, however I wear it, I'm gonna wear it and I'm really happy with it. Um, it just feels lovely. It's quite a heavy garment. It's just so drapey and flowy, but bamboo is quite heavy. So I think it weighs 283 grams. I'll just, because um, I've got my blue one here actually. Um, oh, sorry, it's reaching. I've got my blue one here. This is my blue one. I think the neck, neckline was definitely higher on the blue one. 
So, I mean, I like this neckline. And you can see here, this is where the increases were just yarn overs and then knit through the back loop. And just on that first one, it actually looks kind of like little holes, which because it's uniform, I'm fine with that. Like it kind of just looks a little bit decorative. Um, yeah, I added some short rows in the back. I added four sets of short rows, just two rows underneath each of these four ribbed sections. Um, like I said, I used a 3.5 mil needle instead of a four mil needle because of gauge. And I'm glad I did because you can see it's actually a little bit, even on a three and a half mil needle, it's, you can see my bra strap just through there. Now I'm fine with that, just like sort of semi showing through. I'm okay with that's not, um, that doesn't bother me. It's, um, you know, like, I think it's it's not sheer, right? So, or oh, you can actually, my bra has like a little silver thing. You can just sort of see it. I might actually, I don't know, might cut that bit out. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, so really happy with, oh, I can really see it in that light. Maybe it's just because the, sh the, the light is shining right on it. Um, anyway, yeah, I might end up cutting off that little decorative silver thing on my bra. That's my blue one which I guess is pretty similar. Um, I might put one on top of the other and I'll put a picture up um, of one. I'll put the blue one on top of this one because I think this one's a little bit bigger. Let's see if you can see there's much of a difference, but I like both. And this is kind of more like wear with blue jeans, um, casual and, or I could wear it with white pants, uh, I guess. And this one is a little bit, feels a bit dressier because of the color. Right, I think that's um, enough on that. And yeah, I love it. It just feels really, really nice next to the skin. Okay, works in progress. Um, I have one, no, two new cast-ons. So um, the first one, I finally cast on camisole number four by my favorite things knitwear. And I'm using Knitting for Olive 100% um, silk in the colorway raspberry pink. So you can see I haven't got a lot done. I only cast this on yesterday. Um, that's just the start of one of the little front bra cups. And the interesting thing about this, so I'm using a smaller needle again. Um, I'm not normally a loose knitter, but I have found with plant fibers, maybe plant fibers and metal needles, plant, silk's not plant, but non-wool fibers and metal needles. Um, you know, my gauge is a little bit looser. So I went down to a three millimeter needle. I swatched on a 2.75 and a 3.25. And, you know, I think it was kind of like, you know, what is it, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, the middle is just right. Is that right? Is that Goldilocks and the Three Bears? No, it's not, because it's like Daddy Bear, Mama Bear, Baby Bear was just right. Anyway, for me, the just right is in the middle. This one was too loose. This one was too, um, I'm being a bit spacey. This one was too loose. This one was too tight. Um, I didn't even swatch on the three mil. Um, sorry if I'm sounding a bit scatty. Uh, I think the three mil, which is in the middle, should be fine. But the reality is, getting to the point, I looked at, look, in looking at the pattern, reading through it, the first three sizes are all, um, they all start the same. So, and the three, si the smallest size is 28.75 inch bust. The second size is 31 and the third size is 34 and a half. So I definitely want to sit somewhere between the first and the second, maybe even around the first, but because they all start the same, I thought, well, I'll, I'll use this as my swatch on the three mil needles. So I've got a little bit more to go on this first bit and then I cut the yarn and then I start the second one. So when I've cut the yarn and I've, um, before I start the second one, I'll, while I'm starting the second one, I'll block this one and then measure the gauge on that and sort of see how, although I've got increases happening. Hmm, might be a bit interesting. Anyway, I'll, I'll put it over me and sort of see how does it, how does it seem to be fitting. Um, anyway, I'm really happy that I finally started it because I finished a top, so I've cast on a new top and I, I wanted to make sure that, um, I just didn't want to have too many of these, this sort of um, yarn on the needles because I, I find it a bit hard on my hands. Right, let me see if there's anything else. Oh yes, um, on the back, size one is a little bit different to size two and three. So before I start the back, by the time I've finished the front sections, I wanna be sure of what whether I'm making a size one or a size two. But I, you know, sometimes you can fudge a little bit along the way just with 
cast on stitches under the arms or whatever. One of the reasons I'm also happy I went down a needle size is I wanted this to be pretty dense because I'm probably not going to be able to wear a bra with this. So I definitely don't want it um, see-through. Might be able to manage a strapless bra, but even then I'm not sure. So we'll see how we go. Anyway, um, yes, very happy new top on the needles. My second new uh, work in progress is another Sophie scarf. So uh, it's my mum's birthday on the 26th of January, which is Australia Day here. And that's not far away because it's the 10th now, so that's in 16 days. And I asked her, I thought she might have wanted another hat, but she said she's good for hats, but she quite likes the Sophie scarf. So, um, so I cast her on a Sophie scarf and I'm using the recommended needle size, which is a 3.5 mil. And I'm, so this is Sophie scarf by Petite Knit. And this is Tosh Merino DK in the colorway Smokestack. And this is some leftovers from, I don't know, I can't remember something else that I made. And yeah, I'm really, uh, this yarn's really lovely. It's a single ply DK. And I don't even know this if they still make it anymore, but I'm, yes, it, it knits up really nicely and it's definitely next to skin soft. So where am I up to? That's all I've done so far. Um, yep, so happy with that though. That will get, definitely get, I mean, my mum knows I'm making it for it because we talked about it. Um, and if she watches this, she'll see it. Um, but yeah, like it's, it's fine, it's not a secret. Um, I don't, my mum doesn't, probably doesn't really like surprises or secrets anyway. So, um, yes, it doesn't matter if she's already seen it before she gets it. Uh, let me see. Three other works in progress. So I've got five works in progress. My three other ones... Oh, just... Okay, sorry, just getting to it. Uh, that would be the Oslo hat. I'm knitting this with some yarn that I got from Japan. This is this KFS opal yarn with some glitter in it and some leftover um, Rowan Kid Silk Haze in the colorway Nectar. So those two together. And let me see, I think I've done about, I did a provisional cast on 3.25 millimeter needles, which is what is recommended for the Oslo hat with mohair pattern. And I've got about four inches done there. Some of it, sometimes my stitches look a little bit, oh, I know why that looks a bit funny. That's where there was a break in the yarn of the mohair, so. Um, yeah, I'll just weave that in later. So yeah, it's looking really nice. I'll show you somewhere where it doesn't have a break in the yarn. And when I get to about seven and a half inches, that's when I will um, unpick the provisional cast on and do like, um, you know, fold it up and knit them together. So that, um, yes, for the folded brim. So that's that one. That's my second version of the Oslo hat with mohair. And it's a really, like, I do love having a basic stockinette hat pattern on the needles. Uh, my second, sorry, my fourth work in progress is um, the Skimmer Socks by Sheila Toy Stromberg. And I'm knitting this out of Three Mums Sock Yarn. Um, I don't know if they're still dying anymore, but I got this at a knitting retreat, um, a Knitter's Guild retreat years ago in Hornsby, I reckon maybe five or six years ago. And I already made a pair of socks out of these, so this is the leftovers. I have 32.8 grams, and I don't think that will be enough for two, even though they're no-show small socks, I'm probably about a gram or two grams short. So I will just do a contrast. Um, I haven't decided yet, but maybe that like one of these, one of these colors, I'll find some contrast yarn and, um, and do, a, do the last row in the bind off. So I'm using 2.25 millimeter needles and for the ribbing and the bind off, I use a two millimeter needle and you actually want the bind off to be tight for this um, so that they stay on. Yes, and these are the best um, no-show socks I've ever come across, way better than any commercial ones. I've never found a commercial pair that stay up, um, but these ones, these ones do. So where am I up to? I've done the toe and I'm just working my way up the, up the back of the foot and I'm probably not too far maybe a few more rows and I'll start doing the gusset increases and then my last work in progress is dotted rays I think my husband's just arrived home so I might pause in a second but my last work in progress is dotted rays this is by Stephen West it's my second version of the shawl and it's really coming along now I'm using the recommended needle size which is a four millimeter needle 
I'm using a single ply fingering weight, um, which is, let me see, Dingo Dye Works Jumbuck. I don't think she's dying anymore. And I, I'm pretty sure the colorway is uh, coring. And yeah, I've got, what have I got? I've got 60, I've got 68 grams left of the second ball. And I've started weighing each section and the last section was 27.2 grams and I'm part way through. You can see I put like a little marker for my short rows so that I don't, the short rows line up. See how these holes, um, you know, are all in a line. So the short rows line up with these, but it just means to stop me counting. So I don't, you know, I don't, I don't have to count. Oh, I'm 15 from the last section. I put, when I turn, I move this marker to where the next one will be and then knit back. So, yep, so that's, um, I will keep measuring, like obviously the last one was 27.2 grams. I'll, I'll see how much the next section weighs to then see if I have enough for, I should do, but like how many more sections, because I'll just try and knit until I um, not completely run out of yarn, but run out enough for a whole section. And the bind off actually, I think on my last one, I weighed the bind off. The bind off uses like 10, grams or something a fair bit so you definitely have to make sure that you've um save enough yarn for the bind off because I, I can't get any more of this and I could probably try to fudge a little bit with another gray although that's dk this is fingering um yeah I don't I don't really want to have to do that because it's my last one was two skeins and it was plenty long enough so this one two skeins is going to be plenty long enough and you have to show you how it's got a really nice eye cord edging and yeah, I don't know, like maybe I didn't love it as much when I was, when it was small, but now it's getting bigger. I think it's really pretty. So that's it for my works in progress five at the moment. So my next section is friend from the vault where I, in this case, it's friends from the vault, um, where I talk about something that I knit earlier. So my friends from the vault section today is the monkey socks and I've knit nine pairs of monkey socks. Um, this is Monkey Socks by Cookie A. It's a free pattern on Nitty, but it's also in Cookie A's book. I think Knit Sock Love, I think that's what it's called. Um, and there's a few more sizes in there, but there are, I think there's a few sizes on Nitty anyway. Anyway, these were the first top-down socks that I knit. I might have a look and I'll put in when, uh, when I made them. I can't remember exactly when I made them. And um, this is the first pair. So they've obviously, they've been worn quite a bit. This is using Sundara Sock Yarn. And I thought that this would suit because the yarn is a semi-solid, but it's a semi-solid with quite a bit of variation in value. And so you can see it's got a lot of dark sections and light sections. And as a result, I don't think this kind of yarn is actually the best kind because you sort of lose the, it just muddies the, the design. I actually think this pattern is really good for variegated yarn where there's not a lot of um, difference in value so the value itself even if you've got different colors the value in the different colors so you don't have these dark and light sections so that's probably why i like them um, this is probably this is also sundara sock yarn um, but i had two full skeins and so i decided to make knee-high socks and this one i've made a few others so i've only got four here because most of them are gifts but um, after the first one, I think after that, most of the time I did a no pearl monkey version. Um, and I think I'm pretty sure it was Crafty Pancakes who um, came up with that. And it's really like the same pattern, but instead of purling, you can see that there's in this lace pattern, you've got pearls in these sections. The design still looks really nice, even if you don't purl, if you just knit. So, and you can probably see that the direction the direction is different because I, is it different? Maybe not, I don't know. Oh, maybe I turned the whole thing upside down. Anyway, this one was definitely toe, I knit these toe up. So you can see it's got a different heel. So this one's got a heel flap, is knit top down, heel, oh, it's got all sorts of just fluff and stuff on it. Heel flap and gusset. And this one is like a flegal heel. So you can still do the same design um, on the socks but just with a different um, stockinette flegal heel for the back. And what that did was it allowed me to use all of the yarn. Mm -hmm. So I've got these knee high ones and you can see, this is what I was talking about with the value. There's pinks and blues in this yarn, but they're all kind of similar in value. You don't have these large 
streaks of dark colors. So yeah, so I haven't actually, I don't even know if I've worn these. I use these as sort of a bit of a sample for one of my sock classes, but I um, I think I might start wearing them actually, at least for winter. I think they're pretty cool. Oh, and for the, for the cut, because I have quite big calves, as I went up the calf, all I did was I changed needle size. So I knit it on a 2.25 millimeter. Then I, as it went up the calf, I changed to a 2.5 and then a 2.75. Um, and they're, they're fine. And they fit sort of just right up to, just under my kneecap. Kneecap, yes. And this is another version in, I think this is three, this is another one of the three mum sock yarns that I bought at, where did I buy them? At, at the knitting retreat in Hornsby, the Knitters Guild knitting retreat. And the last one that I've got here to show you, I just grabbed them out of my daughter's drawer. This is um, Skein Yarn, their Uptown Sock Base, which is just delightful. It's such a lovely, soft sock yarn, and that's neon and gray. And this one, I think I did these, no, I did these top down. I did these top down because I can tell because it's got a heel flap and gusset. So I don't even know if they still fit her anymore, but maybe they do. I don't think her foot has grown that much. So yeah, I just did little short um, cuffs for those ones for her. And yeah, so I've got these four here and I've made five other versions for gifts. And like, I mean, I can go either way with knitting them, either top down or toe up. It doesn't really bother me. I think the main reason for me with toe up, especially for these ones, was to, um, was to use all of the yarn up. So, um, but yeah, I like, I like knitting the pattern either way. So they are the um, mostly no no pearl. You can see that's with all of these. There's no no pearling in there, but it's still you still see the design pretty nicely. No pearl monkeys by um, Cookie Air. Uh, right, that's it for friend from the bolt. Oh, uh, bolt friend from the vault. But I will say that's actually a, it's the first lace sock pattern I've ever made, and it's a really easy memorable pattern. Um, dead easy and you, like once you sort of got it set up you don't need to look at the chart anymore well at least I didn't after I've done it you know after I've done a couple of repeats right I'm going to move on to purchases so um, Skein Sisters my local yarn store where I also teach um, knitting classes once a month they have um, just got in knitting for olive yarn so they've been they sent out a survey at the end of last year sort of asking their customers you know like what yarn should they be looking to carry? And I, I'm, I think probably one of the things that people was, uh, were asking for was knitting for olive yarn. So they had some come in and um, the newsletter came out on Friday and I wasn't going to go in, but I was like, well, oh, I'm on school holidays. So um, I went in on Saturday and I just wanted to see the colors, but of course I couldn't leave without um, making a few little purchases. So, and of course I want to support my local yarn store. So at least that's, you know, anyway. And I love knitting for olive yarn, especially I got three balls of this. So I'll show you what I bought. Um, I got three balls of the knitting for olive cotton merino um, in the colorway bark. And I, um, I use this for my pie camisole which I love and that used just over two skeins now I definitely want to make another top in this it's very fine gauge like I think I knitted on like 35 stitches over four inches on a 2.5 mil needle very tight but I love I really love that fabric so I need to look for another um, project because I would like to wear I'd like to make a top in um, in this for work and the pie camisole, it's just a little bit too, I can't really wear a normal bra with it. It feels a little bit too much shoulder and stuff. Probably get away with that one, but I don't know. I just, I'd like something with a bit more coverage. So I need to look for a another pattern for this one. So I haven't worked that out yet, but that's definitely, and even though it's 70% cotton, um, that's a really, it doesn't feel like that in my hands. It feels like I'm just working with wool. Like it's really lovely and light and it's got enough, the 30% wool has enough give that it doesn't hurt my hands at all. So yes, that's, um, I'm excited to start a new top with that. Uh, but I've got to find a pattern first. Um, but what I'll probably do is I might have a look at other people's projects in this yarn and see if anything immediately grabs me. Another thing I bought was um, I hadn't tried their merino before, so because um, I tried the cotton merino and the silk, that's all I'd tried so far. Because I used the silk for, well, I'm using it now for um, camisole number four, but I also used it for the cumulus blouse. 
So I bought the Merino and the Soft Silk Mohair in Ballerina. And I thought that would make a really lovely soft pink um, Oslo hat with mohair. So, and that way I get to try those two yarns together. And I also, that will be like a gauge swatch for me too, because, uh, I don't know, 3.25 millimeter might be a bit dense, but it'll be interesting to see what my gauge is like on like a, at least on the hat and everything. So, yep, so that's that, um, that purchase. I also got, um, so I've been wanting to make Magnolia Bloom. And I thought maybe they had this yarn, so this isn't the knitting for olive yarn, but they had this yarn, Loch Lamond, which um, the dragon knitter used in her field sweater. So, and it looked great. And the yarn is really affordable. It's very reasonably priced for the yardage. I think this was, let me see, uh, $16 Australian, which is, I don't know, I don't know what that is US. I'll work it out. I'll do a currency conversion and work it out. And that is for 50 grams, which is um, 150 meters. And yet on the ball band, it says it knits up at like an 18 stitch gauge. So probably because I'm guessing it's wool and spun, so it's quite lofty. So I got um, 900 meters of this, and I also got four balls of the soft silk mohair in soft blue. I thought those two would look really lovely together. And I'm gonna try Magnolia Bloom. So Magnolia Bloom has, um, 12 stitch gauge and 17 rows over four inches, which is, that's pretty bulky. I'm not sure I could get that with this yarn, but I also don't know that I want to. Like I think, like when I look at that sweater, um, it's very big and bulky. I think I would like a slightly light, lighter version of that. So I think um, even though like my gauge will be tighter, so I need to do a gauge swatch. Um, I'll, I might just knit a larger size and do a bit, and it's top down in the round, so I should be able to like try it on as I go. So yes, um, excited about that. And I also purchased, because I, I went in with some of my fingering weight yarn to try to find um, mohair that would go with it for some, you know, the nice fingering, like sort of the petite knit type um, fingering with mohair sort of um, sweaters combinations. So I had this um, Madeleine Tosh Dandy, this is already in my stash, Madeleine Tosh Dandelion in paper and I had three skeins of it, have three skeins of it. So that's 900 meters and I found um, this oat which is um, four balls of this is 900 meters so I can put those two together and I haven't worked out which sweater but 900 meters should be enough for a not crazy oversized but a roomy enough um, sweater, you know, like a no frills or something along those lines, like a, a petite knit. It doesn't have to be petite knit, but yeah, I think you get the idea if I say something like that, a fairly basic stockinetti kind of, um, you know, fingering weight and mohair combination. I think those look really nice together. You know, that's pretty well, pretty closely matched those two. Now I took some other yarn in with me that I didn't find a match for. I took this Scout yarn, I have four skeins of this. So four skeins of this is like 1600 yards, I think. So I was hoping to find a match for this for the Purpur Purpuria sweater by um, Teddy Lutzak and I couldn't find one. Like Ballerina was too, Ballerina was too light. There was another one that was a bit too, um, a bit, too wrong shade, I don't know, um, just didn't quite work. The value wasn't um, right either. So in the pinks that they're carrying, it doesn't really work. So I might have to look for something online. So tricky trying to, I really wanted to try to match that in person. And because they've started carrying it and they've got a, like a limited range of colors at the moment, but because they're now um, ordering from them, they can order a color that you request. Obviously they have to buy 10 skeins of it and you don't have to buy 10 skeins, they have to buy 10 skeins. And you can like, let's say buy five or whatever you need. I think I need like seven for this though, right? So um, if I try, I'm trying to mat, match yardage for that sweater. So I'll have a, another look online and try to figure out, it's just tricky, it's really tricky. Um, because once I've asked them to order it for me, like I'm committed, so they, I mean, I suppose, I don't know. I'm not sure how it works like that. I'll talk to them about it and say, look, if it totally doesn't match, would you guys just have 10 to sell in the shop and I try something else? But you can't just keep doing that over and over. So anyway, I have to talk to them about that as a possibility. And maybe even just ask some advice. Like I'll ask Jane in the store to have a look with me what they think might be a good soft silk mohair match for 
scout. Right, um, the other two yarns that I took in with me that I couldn't find a match for was this Madeleine Tosh, um, I think that's Tosh Merino Light in Whiskers, which is a really cool, I've got two skeins of this, um, like gray but with browns, like and tans, but I just couldn't find one that really worked. And the Rowan Felted Tweed in that brown color. So I think I'm probably in, will end up making this a carnaby skirt out of this. I'm just debating, debating whether I hold it single or double. If I hold it single, I have to use a pretty small needle, but for a skirt, like, do I really want a super like that held double adding that kind of bulk around me? I'm not sure. So I have to have a think about that. Oh, the other thing I thought I'd show you though was if these two, when I swatch those two together, they don't work. For whatever reason sometimes it doesn't right sometimes sometimes these two together look worse than each one individually what i could use this for is the um clay sweater by ozetta so i've got 900 meters of this if it does knit up at 18 stitch gauge and the cl clay sweater is an 18 stitch gauge i'm really happy that i have a secondary plan for this like if i don't think it's going to work for Mag magnolia bloom um, i've got another alternative and what would i do with this I found in my stash. This is the yarn Rowan Felted Tweed um, that I used for my boardwalk uh, vest. And oh, don't they look nice together? They look so pretty. So I only have 570 meters of this left. So I'm not sure exactly what I could make with that 570 meters. Like they look so nice together, but oh, slip over. That would, how good would that be? I might be changing plans like <sighs> midstream, but that would make a really nice clay sweater. And that, I've been thinking about a slipover, you know, like a loose kind of slipover, maybe that's enough. And then even though I've got 900 meters of this, I could just use whatever's left with that for another Oslo hat or something, you know, I, I figure it out with what's left. Or I could return one to the store because if I haven't like wound it or anything. Anyway, oh, so many, so exciting having, um, and I am planning on doing a pl like 2023 wrap up slash 2024 plans video. So that is up. I'm planning on doing that um, uh, on the weekend, I think, um, or at least recording it later this week and up, uh, uploading it on the, the weekend. Anyway, that's with my purchases for the week. And I also bought a fridge. So um, totally different tack I'll, I'll talk more about it in um in personal stuff but our fridge was 18 years old it's a purchase though it's a big purchase and I finally it just the doors weren't shutting properly the um what do you call it they're like the seal was sort of all falling away we had parts of it duct taped <laughs> anyway 18 years we had a good run so anyway I'll talk more about that in my not a lot more but a little bit in my personal stuff so but that's it for purchases for the week like um yeah, and I am planning on buying the um, Gilliatt CL color. Where is it? Oh, it's over on the other side of the room that I used for my Manhattan hat. I still want to buy three skeins of that for Snow Wonder because I just want to make that. And um, But Sunspun's shut until the 15th of January, so I just have to wait until they come in, um, until they get back. Anyway, that's it for my purchases. What has caught my eye? And then this is kind of going to blend into plans because obviously my purchases have kind of morphed into plans, but what has caught my eye will also sort of connect with plans as well. Um, before I get into what has caught my eye, I forgot to mention one other skein that I bought and that was um, one extra skein of Merino in the colorway Granite Grey. And I was going to make a Sophie scarf for my mum out of that and hold it double. But when I started knitting with it, I was like, this just isn't soft enough. Um, I mean, it's, it's fine, it would be all right, but it's not what I would normally choose to put around my neck. It would be totally fine for a jumper. But for a neck, you kind of want something a little bit softer. So I'm just gonna unravel that and I'll probably try and find another, like a gray that, um, a gray mohair that goes with that and just make a gray um, Oslo hat with mohair. So I've got a few of those yarns. That's sort of my default. Oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do with you. Oslo hat with mohair. So, um, but yeah, I just started it and I'll unravel it now. And, um, but I do need to, either I need to purchase another gray mohair or I'll try and find something in stash because I don't need a lot, like one ball. Um, right. 
So that was another purchase that I forgot. The other thing I just wanted to show you was just, um, these. this is that blue Rowan Felted Tweed and that's the brown. I thought I'd just show you those two together. Don't they look so nice together? So anyway, just just a thought. I don't, I don't know that I plan to do anything with these two together because that's going to be a skirt and that might be a slip, might be a slip over now. Um, but they look nice together too. So anyway, uh, right. So I'm up to what has caught my eye. So one thing that has caught my eye is the Champagne Cardigan by Petite Knit. And she uses a DK weight yarn, Double Sunday and Mohair for that pattern. And on a 4.5 mil needle gets 18 stitches. So, and I found there's this, um, I, I put these two yarns together. Where are they? This, um, uh, what do you call it? Shepherd Supreme, like super deep stash. And I bought this on um, eBay, I think, like maybe 15 years ago. Really, this is like some of the first yarn that I bought when I was back purchasing yarn. But I really like it. And I knit a gauge swatch on it just by itself. And then I knit a gauge swatch of it with mohair, um, this Rowan Kid Silk Haze. And a um, very small gauge swatch. I started on a 4.5 mil needle. It was very dense. I was going to make, well, I started actually, make Turtle Dove. And so that was it on a 4.5 mil needle. I knit a bit more on a five and then on a 5.5. And I liked it on the five mil needle and I cast on for Turtle Dove. What I didn't like with Turtle, I just didn't like how Turtle Dove was going and I knit a lot of it. So I unraveled the yarn. I'll show you. This is it unraveled. Um, and I've got a lot more balls, but this is this is how much I had knit. So that's, oh, it's not quite as big as my head, but it feels like enormous. So this is all of what, I'd obviously knit quite a lot of it, um, but I just wasn't liking how it was turning out. But I was liking the fabric. So I'm just thinking that this could make a really nice this could make a nice champagne cardigan. The only thing that I'm a little bit unsure of is I actually whether, because that's too small a gauge swatch for 4.5. It was more just, I was finding it quite dense. And I, Turtle Dove's like a poncho and I wanted a little bit of drape for that. So I liked it on the five mil. I'm not sure whether, if I'm going to try again for the champagne cardigan, I would need to do a proper swatch on a 4.5 millimeter needle and see if I like the fabric and am I getting gauge because this is a pretty oversized cardigan and I'm like, I might be even more than, like I have a feeling I might be like 17 stitches. So I might have to sort of math down even from the smallest size. Um, but it is something to for me to think about. I like that cardigan. I really like it with like a few big buttons. I like the double knit um, neckband. So yes, that's definitely caught my eye and I'm actually sort of, trying to work out if I can use this stash yarn to, um, and so that's, I've still got like heaps more of it, right? So I've got, pl I've got plenty of yarn. Um, so that's, that is what has caught my eye in a possible project. Um, another one that has caught my eye, which I think I've mentioned before, is the Moby sweater by Petite Knit. Interestingly enough, also double Sunday and mohair, but on a four mil needle and getting 20 stitch gauge. So this just would not work. Like this would be way too tight on a four mil needle. So I couldn't use this. I would need to find a lighter yarn and I don't know, like a light-ish DK yarn or a sport weight or something. And I don't think I have any stash for that. But I really like the look of the Moby sweater. And I think it was Knee Knits who has mentioned that she'd made it in the past and it was a lot easier than some other cable sweater that she's knitting at the moment. Like as in it wasn't too like taxing on the brain. And yeah, that's, I like textured sweaters and cables and things, but I just don't like it if there's too much happening. So yeah, I don't think I have yarn for it, but it's because I don't think this would work for it. Um, at 20, I, I think it would be bulletproof at 20 stitches. So I'd have to find different yarn, but it's caught my eye again. Um, and I'm thinking about it. The last thing that has caught my eye is Early Bloomer by Heidi Kiermaier. And I really like this one. It's really pretty delicate. Um, uh, it's actually a DK weight top with um, a lovely ferro yoke flowers and obviously I just finished um, my alpine alpine blue so yeah I, but this really caught my eye partly as well because it, it doesn't use very much of the because there's so much um, contrast uh, in the yoke and so which means you use another color a fair bit 
and also its DK and its um, short sleeve, I think it only uses for my size something like 450 meters of the, the main yarn. So I have this um, yarn in stash, Plucky Knitter Primo Sport, which is obviously lighter than a DK, but I could, um, you know, I could either, I could either knit a slightly larger size or, because um, I still, I have actually 500 meters of this, so I could make the second size up with 500 meters. And so that would be the body of the, um, of the top. And then I thought I've got this like leftover sport. I think I'm pretty sure this is sport. Um, so that could be the flowers. I'm not sure. Um, I just thought it looked really pretty. Um, I, what I actually really like about it is the little contrast trim, but I wouldn't like to use that as the trim because it just would worry me that it would get, like it would look dirty. Um, being gray but if it was the brighter color I like a, um, or I don't know I, I might have liked that better if it wasn't this I'm not sure about that as a trim but I do like the look of it so I'm thinking about those two together for it the other thing that I was thinking about for it um, was I do get a bit overwhelmed with all my plans was um, I have this yarn left over from my baby cables and big ones two sweater and Debbie Bliss Merino DK. Now I think I'm, I don't have a huge amount of it left, but I do have about 400 meters. But I also knit this um, hat, which I don't like very much in it. And that's got about 60 grams. So I'll put it on. This is, it was called Hoarfrost. Mm, it's not too bad. Just maybe I haven't blocked, it needs blocking. But anyway, I can at least unravel this if I need to. It was called Hoarfrost and it's changed the name. So I can't remember, I'll put down what the new name is. Actually, it's not that bad. Hmm, I don't know why. Anyway, but I would unravel it for a top because I found this, well, I have this like in, uh, on, on that bookshelf down there as a bit of a decorative thing because it's leftover yarn from these baby blankets that I made. This was a, um, a Madeline Tosh fade set and I made two, I had enough yarn to make two baby blankets out of it, one for Beck's baby and another for my friend Gloria, her baby. Um, although both of those babies are like nine now. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I'm not sure about Bex, but um, I know Gloria's daughter is just about to turn nine. I made them in 2015. So yes, and it's 2024, isn't it? Yeah, anyway, so um, these blankets, I'll show you a picture of the blankets because obviously I don't have either of them because they were gifted, but they have, it's a, a fade set and I thought that might look really nice in the yoke of Alpine, not Alpine Bloom, um, Early Bloomer. And so anyway, I've got eight of these. So eight, twelve, yeah. So I could do like um, fading and I've got plenty of that. They don't look like a lot, but obviously for color work, you don't need a huge amount. And if I do it in different sections, um, so then I was thinking maybe would that go with with those maybe the gray and the pink because I do have where is it this yarn here which is um, I've got about 500 meters of this which is left over from my um, just Nicole top but I'm not sure I think the cream is a bit off with the pinks like I think with the pinks a gray would look better that's why I'm thinking this but it is a bit of an oatmeal gray but I still think it might look nice like um, and if I need, I would need more yarn, I'd have to unravel this hat. Um, but I would do that, like if I liked it together. So it's, it's caught my eye and I'm just thinking about it. And, but yeah, I'm not sure. Or I could, because it's only like 400 meters, I could just buy two, two balls of like a, mm, two, like 200 grams, maybe 250 grams of something that might, um, I wonder if the, Knitting for Olive Merino Hill double would work for that. Anyway, lots of, lots of thoughts. Um, I don't like, I hate the idea of actually unraveling something that I've knit, even though it's never been worn. Um, looks really messy. Like if I sh show you that, doesn't that look awfully messy? I don't, I don't know that I've blocked it, but if I'm gonna unravel it, it would make no sense to block it. Either way, if I unravel it, it's going to need, um, the yarn's gonna need like steaming or something, washing to get rid of the kinks because that was knit quite a while ago um but yeah it does seem a bit sad to unravel it i could just it's actually not that bad 
but it would be better if it was um it'd be better if it was blocked i might try that and then i just i can't un like unless there's a real problem with it like it's not going to fit anybody ever i have trouble unraveling like i can't even sweaters because i'll probably do a video on this at some point sweaters that i've made that aren't getting worn um I just can't bring myself to unravel the yarn. I've done it maybe once or twice, and I'd rather just either give it away or unless unless nobody could ever wear it. So I might do that as another video at some point of the knits that I have that just aren't getting worn. Or, because there's so many, it could be an additional regular segment. Although maybe these videos are getting a bit long and maybe I don't need any additional segments. Anyway, just a few thoughts. Um, Yes, yeah, so that's what's caught my eye. Oh my goodness, yes, sorry, I'm probably getting a bit long now. I'm only just now up to plans. Although I have talked about a lot of plans already, so probably the only other thing, um, let me grab some more yarn and I'll just quickly run through my plans. Right, so I am going to make the half and half wrap, finally, um, with this Pearl Soho Linen Quill in Red Poppy and Baby Bird Blue. I've talked about that ad nauseum um, but that dotted raise is getting like towards finishing so this should be as soon as I finish dotted raise I'll be casting on for this so that is coming and that's a definite and so that's that one um, when I can get the yarn this is the leftovers from my Manhattan hat when I can get some more of that from um, Sunspun this is the De Rerum Natura Gilead in CL I'm going to make Snow Wonder um, I am pretty sure I'm going to make the Carnaby skirt in this Rowan felted tweed. Whether I make it in holding the yarn double or single, I'm not sure. Um, I'm really keen to make another Oslo hat in with mohair in these this um, Brooklyn tweed loft fossil and this Daruma um, silk mohair yarn from Japan, and then this cashmere yarn also from Japan. Um, that I got from Avril Pepin. So I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to make that and just, I'll probably just use a larger needle. So that is going to, I can't make every, I won't start another Oslo hat until the other one's done. Similar to my muscle bras, right? One on the needles at a time. Oh, except maybe if one's got to the decreases. Once I'm at the decreases, then I can cast on a new one. Because uh, once you're at the decreases, you're almost done. Um, the Kuta top by Sari Nordlin. Now that I've started camisole number four, I feel better about, okay, that one's underway. And when that one's done, I will start the Kuta top using this Tin Lina, um, Sanders Garn Tin Lina, um, and this really pretty colorway. Got just a color number, but that's, um, that's upcoming. Uh, I've still plan on making a, a baby gift for my coworker, but I'm not 100% sure what I'm gonna make. And the other thing is the stripe hype sweater I've shown before, but that's my yarns for it. And I would be starting with the pink. Um, no, I wouldn't because that's last. Um, you do the neckband last. I'd just be starting with the, um, the cream yarn and this um, mustard. So it would go cream, mustard, um, dark purple, and then later the blues and the pinks. So that's also... Um, another to be cast on soon right that's enough for my plans there's like so many um when you put that together with all of the what's caught my eye and purchases and things like you know i don't know that i'll have much extra to add in a uh, 2024 knitting plans video i've already like i think i've got quite a few months worth of knitting there um but i'm sure i can i can always plan more so i'm going to get into um my next segment which is sewing Right, so sewing. I finally did some sewing this week. I actually sewed two tops, the same top, but um, the first one I kind of messed up. So this is the, and I'm wearing it now, quite a different look from the one I just had. This is the Francis Top by Fiber Mood. It's a very straightforward pattern. There's only three pieces, front, back, and a bias binding around the neckline. For the first version that I made, um, I didn't, it, the pattern didn't tell you to, but I didn't stay stitch the neckline. And I should know better, but I haven't sewn in a while. So that you can see the neckline's really large anyway, um, but without stay stitching it, it's even wider. Like it's practically falling off my shoulders to the point where this one's almost unwearable. I'm not really sure 
what I could do aside from um, yeah taking off the bias binding doing something like maybe threading something through it um, yeah I just really don't know um, or making doing some really weird work around where I sort of sew bits down or I don't know um, but at the moment it's not wearable so it's got a really nice um, interesting I'll show you this one this one actually is wearable but it's still very wide neckline um, it's got very large sort of sleeves that has this like thick that's I guess the statement of it the um, I'll put a picture of okay I will say about this now it has no sort of fastenings it only has a bias binding neckline and it's a woven top so it's got to be reasonably large enough to get over your head because there's no give there's no buttons there's no anything right but this is a very wide neckline and when you look at the picture the main pattern picture it does not look this wide but when you look at another pattern picture if you really look close you can see that the neckline is way wider than the first picture is showing so i reckon for that first picture they've got a bulldog clip or something going on in the back which i i have a problem with you know don't i don't think it's right to try to sell a pattern with misleading photos because there is no way and this is the same top that that top doesn't have something cinched in at the back um so anyway this is how it actually sewed up for me um i'm just using like a like a linen blend i think here and i'm wearing it with a um, a white skirt which is how I would wear it and you can see that um, it's got quite a low back but um, like I, I think it's quite pretty I like I like it this I wish this skirt had pockets but it doesn't um, I didn't make this skirt by the way this is a purchase skirt but it was a very quick make certainly the second time around was very quick because I was like zoom, zoom, zoom. I just made sure that I stay stitched the neckline um, I might uh, I don't know I don't think you need to see me try this one on whether it sits like you can see it sits it's even further out than here um but yeah if anyone has any suggestions on what might um might be something to make it wearable um because i do quite like that green and i've got a skirt that that would go really nicely with um but anyway francis stopped by fiber mood i just a bit of a warning with the neckline what i could do is just redraft the neck a little bit to bring it in a bit but then of course that means I need a smaller piece of bias binding and I'm not sure just how much shorter um, you know whether I just do it by like a ratio you know like as in this is this long this is how long the bias binding is so if I make this circumference 10% shorter I should make the bias binding 10% shorter I don't know if it works quite that way in sewing um, and I'm not really experienced enough to be like all over it so I might just find a different pattern but look it worked well enough it was very quick um, but I'd say that's that would cause me and I'm curious to try it in other fabrics as well um, yeah but a quick sew and good for me just to get my feet wet I was a bit disappointed with my first one and I'm really glad that I made another one straight away afterwards with stay stitching the neckline to at least have a, a sewing win um, yes now the other thing that I was going to do last week was to warp up the loom and I haven't actually done that yet because it's been a bit I've been a bit busy with work and other stuff but I have the yarn ready to go I am going to use this um, I think it's perfect day yarn fingering weight yarn it's like a bamboo merino blend um, it's so variegated that I just don't think I would like this knit up at all and yet I think variegated yarns look really lovely woven um, I've had real really good success with woven weaving um, weaving variegated yarns so and for me and what I because I have so much of this I've got like 230 grams I think I would make it more of a wrap um, like I'll make it quite a nice wide long um, and get the full amount of that I just had a quick look at the um, Ashford Knitters Loom 10 minute video on warping up the loom just to remind myself that it's not that big a deal um, but I do need a second pair of hands and nobody is home today or at least my husband's about to go out and Zach's at the beach and um, so I think I'll do that um, tomorrow because um, I can do most of it by, by myself it's just rolling up um, that I can just use an extra person holding it to move um, move forward with it so if you know if you use a rigid pedal I don't know if it's different with different looms this is the only one I've ever used um, but yes I will I'm 
You'll see this next week for sure. Right, so um, personal stuff, I've just mostly been um, going for walks with friends and walking a bit myself, um, just by myself, but I'm trying to walk every day. I've missed a couple of days in the last week, but um, just raining and um, didn't get out early enough. So I already went today because it's either if I miss the window in the morning, it gets too hot. And then by the afternoon, sometimes I'm just a bit mm, over it and I don't end up going. So it's always best if I go in the morning. We had a bit of a, I mentioned earlier that we bought a new fridge. That was a bit of a debacle. Um, the fridge arrived on Saturday and they didn't have enough people to bring it upstairs. So I had already unpacked the whole like 600 litre fridge that our old one unpacked everything into Eskies and other, our other small fridge. And then they said they couldn't deliver it. So they took it away and I put everything back. I mean, this is quite a lot of work doing all of this, unpacking a whole fridge, if you've ever done it, a lot. And then put it all back. And then on Sunday, they brought it back. Again, I did the same thing. And then this fridge had a dent in it. So they sent it back and I put everything back. Um, anyway, I just, I was so over it. And then my husband found another version or another fridge that was cheaper, same fridge, but cheaper. So we just canceled the order and I just got the new fridge today. So that's what I'll be doing this afternoon is putting everything back again in the new fridge. Um, it has forced us to reevaluate, like, do we really need this and tossing things that are out of date or have been in the freezer for like over a year, sometimes over two years. Anyway, so that's sort of been a bit of other stuff going on. Um, and I've been working, like I've been getting ready for, uh, I went to work on Monday and I spent five hours just organizing all my paperwork, scanning things, throwing things out, um, like literally five hours. I did nothing else because I'd been putting, like usually what I'd do is spend one or two hours and then there'd be all of the trays that are just like, oh, I'm so over it, I'll get, back. I'll get to them later and then I never get to them. So I went through stuff that had been there for like, like from professional development stuff that I did like four or five years ago. So I did a really good clear out. So for me, getting rid of clutter helps me focus. So later this week, um, I'm gonna go in on Thursday and Friday and actually get some work done. And then on Monday, um, Monday next week, Beck is coming for a couple of days. So um, I'm really excited about that. So we will do a joint recording next week, which is yeah, really exciting. I love having, I love visiting friends and I love having them visit me. So that would be nice just for a couple of nights, but that would be great before I go back to work. Uh, other than that, um, I'm still reading Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. I haven't gotten that far with it, just been too many other things going on, um, but I got it. I think Zach's about, my son is about 20 pages past me, so I better hurry up and catch up with him so I can, you know, chat with him about it. Um, we finished the second season of Slow Horses and we're now watching um, the second season of Fargo, which I love. It's really just funny and um, I love the characters and the people and the accent and yeah. Anyway, so that's it. I've probably been talking because I do these in bits. I have no, no idea until I get to the end just how long this final video will be. Um, but I, I know that um, my next video will be a 2023 wrap up of all the things I knit and um, a 2024, at least the first quarter plans. I might have already said everything. So it might just be a wrap up and a yes, these are the things I'm going to make. Um, but I, I'd like to spend a bit of time just firming up those plans because just because I something has caught my eye if I don't have the, the yarn for it or I'm not about to purchase it like I am for Snow Wonder um, I'm just going to put that aside and just sort of focus on what the few because once I start back at work things are going to be quite busy for me um, my load has increased I'm a practice coach now so I'll be like watching other teachers with their teaching I've got a um, like some admin hoops to jump through to become officially an experienced teacher um it's just is a lot of like documenting stuff i already do but it takes time and i'm um still teaching extension two um f between now and september and that's still you know a new course for me teaching i haven't taught it, this version of the course before and so there's quite a lot for me to learn. So yeah, like life is gonna be pretty busy. So anyway, um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll be back on the weekend with um, my 2023 wrap up and 2024 plans. So I'll see you then, bye.